Deandra, can you hear me?
Welcome to Electric Gugak, presented by Culture Hub as part of the Korea Project 2021, supported by the Korea Foundation. I am your host, Iris Eugene Jung, and I am joining from the Culture Hub LA studio, located in downtown Los Angeles, and it's 6 p.m. here on Friday. I am honored and thrilled to host this live multi-locational performance featuring three performances from New York City, Spoken, Washington, and Seoul, Korea. These performances combine Korean traditional music as well as the stories written by the Korean artists with new media practice and also highlight the new expressions of Korean composition. The Korea Project, along with this concert, also present an online gallery called Agora, and the gallery will open right after this show, and you can view the exhibition through our Culture Hub website, and it will last until the end of the month, November 30th. So now, we are about to begin our first performance of Electric Gugak, and it's by Avin Kang and Jessica Kenny. Avin is a composer and multi-instrumentalist, multi and Jessica is a vocalist and composer as well. They are presenting live from Laboratory Spoken, and their performance is in two parts, echolocations, and terpsichore choral dance. Please welcome Avin Kang and Jessica Kenny.
and Peter.
All right, so that was a beautiful performance by Avin Kang and Jessica Kenny. The next performance we're about to see is called A Ritual for COVID-19 by Jin Hee Kim. Jin Hee is an electrical mungo virtuoso and Guggenheim Composer Fellow. She created this piece in memory of millions of deaths worldwide during the pandemic. So without further ado, Jinny Kim performing live from New York.
All right, that was a ritual for COVID-19 by Jin Hee Kim. This performance was developed within the program called Experiments in Digital Storytelling by Culture Hub and La Mama. And we are really happy to be able to present it both online and live in the New York studio. Okay, so our last performance we're going to see the performance from Korea by the project team called e h e g u m It's a team of musicians and media artists from Seoul Institute of the Arts Korea, which is Culture Hub's one of the founding organizations. The name of the performance is p a l u m which in Korean means eight sounds. Please welcome the project team E h e g u m Thank you. 
<laughs> All right. So that was Pal Um by Project Team E Hegeri. Thank you so much for your performance. So now we are going to bring all the performers here with us to briefly talk about their work. Uh, before I do that, actually, let me introduce the E Hegum team very quickly. We have Dan Hong Kim, Director of the Performance, Jung Hwan Kim and Philip Liu for Creative Technology and Media Arts, Sanu Park and Jian Ha for Hagen Performance, and Hyun Lee, Min Hyung Jung, and Jun Young Moon for the video. So I think we are all here. So congratulations to all of you for a beautiful performance. That was such great sound and visuals and aesthetics. So thank you so much for you know, participating in the Electric Guga concert. So let's begin with Avon and Jessica. So Avon and Jessica, can you tell us a little bit about your work? the inspiration behind your performance? Sure, thank you. So as you said, the, there were two sections. One of them was composed by me, uh, that was Church Support Choral Dance, and one was composed by Jessica Echo Location. My part, uh, Church Support Choral Dance is based mostly on a section from the book Dictate by Teresa Yong Cha, who is one of great writers um, of her era. It was from the 1980s. And she is a Korean American author, so kind of one of the greatest, not just great Korean American writers, but great writers. But there's a feeling there, Trips of Coral Dance, which kind of describes a movement, um, uh, kind of alchemical movement we tried to uh, follow, which I tried to follow in the video and the music. So you couldn't see us playing, but we were there making the music and, and came alive with the video. And uh, the second half of the piece um, was a piece that I wrote in a kind of improvisational structure. Um, I've been really interested in this one poem for many years that I read in an anthology of Korean literature translated by Peter H. Lee. Um, and I think he, he actually revised that translation over time for another anthology. Um, so I was thinking a lot about him as a translator and, and also that role of translation in transmitting concepts and culture over time and over you know across different cultural boundaries and how challenging that is uh, but how inspiring and what a worthy risk to really examine all of the all the facets of what happens when those translations occur um, it's easy to just say it's impossible um, and in one sense i do agree with that but i i love how he dealt with that and uh, his first translation was, he, he said it was very inspired by Dante. Um, and the poem itself is by an 8th century Buddhist priest, Korean Buddhist priest. And he wrote this poem about this, the experience of meeting a band of thieves in the mountains. And in the time of Gautama Buddha, um, this also happened, and um, so this is kind of almost like a story that keeps getting re-experienced um, in different eras by different people. So he was inspired by that also to be like a, a kind of journey into the underworld to see the point of view of the thieves, or what I actually came to in my own musical process was the idea that our senses are thieves and they convince us that we know what's true, but actually they're stealing the reality from us. So in a way, this relationship with technology that we're all working with 
um, you know, and to some extent, we don't even have a choice. It's just fundamental part of our lives. We have to deal with it. Um, I think it's good for us to recognize that it steals our senses and gives them back to us in another form. And I think when we're looking at those processes, it can be very, um, very creative. Um, so I also tried to bring in some of uh, my admiration for Korean vocal forms, which I'm not a very knowledgeable practitioner of, but I have taken lessons and I, I'm a huge fan of Kago, of Shijo, and um, all kinds of um, Korean literary recitation forms. So I, I use some of those melodies and to try to honor Yongje, the priest, and Peter, the translator, um, and also that process of the how we deal with our feelings and our perceptions and the illusions that they set up for us. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing the stories behind your performance. It was really beautiful. And Jessica, your voice is really, really beautiful. So moving on to uh, Jin Hee in New York. Hi, Jinny. Your performance was really powerful and emotional. And can you tell us a little bit about the story of your performance and where the, the root of where it started from? Yes, first of all, uh, congratulations to everybody. It was such a wonderful program. Everybody come up with a great uh, creative ideas and it's inspiration for me too. Uh, we went through a very difficult time with the, uh, during the pandemic. Still, we are dealing with this pandemic. Uh, uh, since uh, March uh, 2020, when we had a uh, lockdown, and I was, uh, you know, watching all the news and horrible images about death and uh, around the world, and maybe not so much in America because we we live in such a kind of in closed uh, uh, society, and you just focus on yourself. But then in other country, for instance, India, Brazil, Peru, and I see that so many people stuck of a dead body in, on the streets or in a cemetery. They cannot really deal with this. And the image was striking. And I decided to uh, collect all the, uh, the, uh, in the, uh, the images uh, online, actually. So I've been uh, collecting over three, uh, 500 or something. But then I used probably uh, nearly 300 words in my piece. So that's the story of this piece. I don't have to say so much, but the, the picture, the image you saw, it's a real image. That's the real story of what we have gone through around the world. As an artist, I am also inspired by uh, Korean shamanism, shamanistic seeking uh, good. Uh, that means that the shaman would do special ritual for the, uh, for the deceased. Uh, she would wash that uh, body, uh, not body, but the spirit wash, so then uh, the, these people can go to the uh, uh, peaceful journey. So she using a long white cloth, and, uh, uh, and the white cloth has the uh, nuts. So she released all the nuts. This nuts symbolizing pain, grief, uh, trauma, all those bad things people uh, dealing with the death. And so this shaman would all release the whole thing, and then and then uh, eventually uh, through this uh, beautiful unfolded uh, cloth, uh, the uh, the death, the, the disease that will take a peaceful journey. So I was uh, highly inspired by that uh, um, uh, concept, and so uh, and today I. I I don't have any participant, and so so I have to use symbolic uh, the cloth uh, when I was uh, singing. But then you also saw the projected image that I really work with a twenty-five yard uh, white cloth, and 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 so I was trying to release all the pains. So basically, we are uh, releasing the grief together in this piece. Thank you so much for sharing. 
I think we have a question from the audience in New York. Okay. Uh, check one. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, okay. First and foremost, it was in. Um, I haven't gone to a concert or event in a long time because of the pandemic. But um, one of the most powerful, you know, these, uh, we're a couple of It's really been, you know, the tonight was a very beautiful evening of celebration and evolution. Um, so I'd love to, um, obviously COVID is here for a while. There's composers like Pindarecki who did Requiem for, the, or Threatening for the Victims of Hiroshima, for example. Um, I'd love to ask everyone, um, also I was artist in residence at Seoul uh, Institute a couple of years ago, so it's really beautiful to see the students there. Um, I'd love to ask, what do you guys think about the evolution of instruments right now? Because everyone is using uh, digital technologies and traditional Korean instruments, which is a very powerful um, synergy. Um, other, you know, it, Korea has been uh, doing a tremendous amount of innovation around traditional uh, instruments plus technology. Uh, you guys are not BTS, you know, op approach. Um, tonight was very non-BTS. It was very. <laughs> So I'd love to hear um, if you could talk about the, the collision between contemporary technologies and the traditional forms. And sorry to bring up the Teresa Hakyong Cha thing, but her book Dictate was amazing. Uh, regretfully, she ended life too early. I think she was on a really amazing trajectory. Um, she was inspired by philosophers like Jean Baudrillard and really interesting. We're, we're here in New York, a couple blocks from the Puck Building, which is at Broadway, I'm sorry, Lafayette and uh, Houston. It's a you know crazy story about her uh, but she was just at the beginning of her career. It was really, she's not very well known here anyway, but she should be more well known. So it's really powerful to see a composition dedicated to her. But um, hopefully that's not too much of a big question, but just collage between contemporary instruments and technologies. Just would love to hear your thoughts on that. Um, Jin He or Dae Hong, would you like to? Answer to that question, Jenny. So, I had my electric mango in 1989. It's uh, three decades ago. And uh, I made the first electric mango. At the time, in Korea, they didn't think about electric uh, music uh, uh, in with uh, their traditional music. Actually, I, I was the one for first one was doing that. And um, uh, it was a sensation. Uh, and also uh, the older uh, generation, my, my masters, my teachers, uh, was shocked by that. And But then at the same time, a younger generation thought that was an interesting idea, and then they sort of uh, follow me too. And for a long time, over two, two decades, they didn't know what I was doing, because uh, I am very well-trained uh, traditional musician back there, and then coming to America, and then, uh, my my interest was cross-cultural, and so my cross-cultural work was that uh, Korean philosophy, Korean uh, myth mythology with uh, American technology that's basically merging here, and and so they didn't know what I'm doing for for a long time. But obviously, in 25 years later, I see younger generation doing what I am doing. <laughs> so, uh, so it's yes, I I made that kind of a uh, beginning. Uh, uh, if you think that as a trouble, then I made a trouble. Uh, uh, and but yes, yeah, so so electric common go um, at the time 1989. Uh, th th there was not much technology to make a really beautiful instruments like this. So I had a very funky one, half, half the size of it, because they told me that, oh, you, the, the gomongo string is silk, made of a silk. They said, oh, you cannot have a pickups, you must have a metal strings. So I changed all the strings into metal. And then and they said, oh, you don't need a soundboard, electric instrument, just need your uh, own instrument. So I made half the size and the metal string, and then I plug into whatever, at the time, uh, you know, little device. It sounded like an electric guitar. 
So, so I, I didn't really care for, but then I really work. Uh, there, there's no other option at the time. So I worked for 10 years, and that 10 years gives me a lot of opportunity to think about it more deeper. How can I make this electric komungo, not electric guitar? And, and then 1998, uh, uh, and there was a, uh, the computer program is available. Max MSP come out and the people are using this uh, uh, live interactive program. And so there was a really good um, a point, turning point that I started thinking that new instruments. So I actually rebuilt the instrument more like original. I back to the uh, original size. I used same, the, uh, the silk string there. And then I used a different pickup this time because they developed a lot of uh, sophisticated pickup by then. So, so then I in, uh, developed this common go as it is now. But then when you have instruments, you it, this is not the big uh, ending. You really have to create music. And then all those computer programs designed for Western instruments. Nobody was thinking about Korean musical instruments. And so I had to work with Alex Noyes, this brilliant guy. Uh, it, just making all the program was com commercially available. We retuned, retuned, and basically customized. And that's the way the, the sound is like this. I was keep looking for what would make, what kind of sound, and what kind of music I could create on the electric common go. Uh, it's, it's a long journey. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jean He. Um, I think uh, Daehong from Korea, he can also, you know, Add to what Jinny said, um, he developed uh, electric hegum. Um, Daehong um, is sitting with two beautiful hegum players. Can you tell us a little bit about your dis uh, development of hegum uh, instrument? All right. Um, uh, what well, this was my first electric hegum we I developed nine years ago. Uh, I think. This is what uh, uh, Kim Jin Hee uh, been through. But um, we put the uh, sensors put in the hegum and it, it detects the vibrations. And I create some gadgets and kits so it detects the movement of the player. So when you play the hegum, uh, when you tilt it, it, it uh, gives the different effects and the mount and well the the player really liked it so i saw the potential of it and then last year we developed this electronic hegum it's all digital with a laser <laughs> so uh, so it detects the hand movement and this is bow so it's like uh, inner string outer string and how you swing with it it's it gives you different the volumes and velocity and so since this is all digital i can make any sound with it um this so comparison this is really based on analog this is based on so digital uh, the advantage of both of them, I can make uh, any sound with the digital or uh, detect the movement. This advantage of the both of the uh, instrument is they need computer, so which is the the uh, artist need engineer like me. So for this tonight, tonight show, I developed new hagum. I made the special pickup, still I have to uh, develop more. So the Hagen player can play Hagen like normally what they do, but it can send the signal to uh, any guitar effects or any vocal effects, so it can, it can change the sound. So it can be really intuitive. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I've been through, and I'm sure uh, Kim Jin Hee was like really ahead of us, like 20 years ago. Yeah, totally. 
Yeah, so thank you again for everyone uh, for your beautiful performance. I really appreciate it. And I think this is the end of the show. I just want to say a few things before we close. Uh, special thanks to the Korea Foundation for supporting this event and also to our founding organizations, Lama Ma Experimental Theater and Seoul Institute of the Arts. And I just want to say this in Korean very quickly. 오늘 어, 행사를 가능하게 해주신 어, 한국국제교류재단과 서울예술대학교 그리고 라마마 시범창작단에 감사드리고 오늘 참여해주신 교수님들 그리고 학생 여러분들, 스태프 여러분들 진심으로 감사드립니다. Okay, so uh, the final reminder, we have an online gallery open. I think it should be up and running now, so please check it out. And uh, it was a great pleasure to host the show. And I hope you enjoy the weekend. Thank you for joining us.